7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 19 people in the smoker group. Minus 1 is 18, so 16.13 divided by 18 is 0 0.90. And here I am just pointing out the sample sizes again, n of 17 and n of 19. So now I've got my means and my variances. Almost all the work is done for calculating the independent t-test. A big chunk of doing it is the, is the variances. I know it's a pain in the, in the butt, but uh, it's the only way to do it. Uh, so t calculated. I've got the values I need. So here's the formula. This is the independent t-test formula. So I've got 5.33 minus 4.30. Now it's kind of arbitrary which mean you put first. Now there's a separate issue of whether you should do a one-tail test or a two-tail test, and I don't want to get into that in this presentation. I'm just doing a t-tail test. It's a, it's a more advanced topic that I'll talk about in another video. So 5.33 minus 4.33, which is the two means for the two groups. And then I've got the variances here. 1.13 is the variance for group 1, and 0 0.90 is the variance for group 2, and then I'm dividing those by the sample size, and that's the independent sample t-test formula right here with the values inputted. And when you solve that, you get 1.03 divided by these values in the denominator, then you get 1.03 divided by 0.336, and this 0.336 is the standard error of the difference between two means. And we get a t-value, a calculated t-value of 3.07. So that's the t-value associated with the independent sample t-test. Now, we're not finished, unfortunately. We still have a bit of more work to do. We need to get the critical t-value. And the reason we need to get the critical t-value is that this t-value of 3.07 can happen just by chance. Our sample size isn't very big, 17 and 19 people. You get variability with that, and this these difference between the two means numerically might just happen by chance, and we don't know, and that's why we need to test it statistically to determine at what chance level something like that might happen. And to do that, we need the critical t-value. We need a t-value that represents chance. So t, t critical, what we expect to get simply by chance. We don't want to fool ourselves into thinking there's a difference between two groups when really at the population there isn't. So t critical steps. You need to calculate the degrees of freedom in order to get the, the critical t value. And you need to specify the alpha level. And almost always, the alpha level is specified at 0 0.05. Now, I assume you have a decent, under, a, a somewhat understanding of p-values. And if you don't, I'm going to make a separate video on that. Uh, but this is basically saying that we can accept as much as a 5% chance of fooling ourselves into thinking there's a difference at the population level, when in fact there isn't a difference. So 5% is the error rate that we ex that we're specifying for this analysis. So with degrees of freedom and alpha, we can identify the critical t value in the t table. So a critical t value is not something you calculate with a formula. You identify it in a table at the back of a book usually. So in order to identify the critical, we first need degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom formula for the independent sample t-test is sample size 1 plus sample size 2. So that's group 1 and group 2 minus 2. And in this case, for the smoker and non-smoker group, non-smokers is 17 plus smokers is 19 minus 2 is 34. So the degrees of freedom for the independent sample t-test is equal to 34 based on this basic formula. We've already specified alpha level of 0 0.05. So degrees of freedom are 34, alpha level of 0 0.05. I can now identify the critical t-value in order to compare that against the calculated t-value, which was something like 3.04. Now here's a t-table that's a pretty generic 
generic looking one. And in the column on the left 